everybody. This is Torah portion is Parshas Shemos. Shemos means the names. This is called the Parsha of the names. So what is the meaning of this? This is the Parsha of the names. Also, so Rashi points out, the Torah lists the names of all the, the tribes. And Rashi says, why is it listed again? We already listed it earlier. And Rashi answers famously, because the Jewish people are compared to stars, and Hashem um, counts and gives each star a name. And similarly, Hashem counts and gives each, each of, the, of the Jewish people a name. And that is to show Hashem's love for the Jewish people. End quote. That's the Rashi. This Rashi is difficult. First of all, what does it mean that each star is given a name? And what does it mean that that's a sign of love? And what does it mean that the Jewish people are compared to stars? <clears throat> So I want to share with you three profound ideas about this comparison to stars and why that's a sign, that's a sign of love. There's a famous, famous Gemara, a famous um, passage in the Talmud that says that originally Hashem created the sun and the moon the same size. But the moon, moon um, complained and said, how could there be two kings? And Hashem minimized the moon, and Hashem was mephais, Hashem appeased the moon by giving the moon stars. That's, that's a passage from, from the Talmud, apparently a very cryptic, mysterious Statement. What exactly is the lesson of this of this teaching? So the so as I was explains, the moon the moon symbolizes the the minimized light of the divine presence. That in this world, this world of darkness, Hashem's presence is minimized, is is um, not always perceived. And the moon diverse symbolizes the shechin, the divine presence. But the assistance for the moon are the stars. The stars help the moon spread its light. Therefore, the stars have a role of spreading the, the, the divine light. And the, therefore, the Jewish people are compared to stars. And just as each star has a purpose, has a function, and its, its function is to enhance and spread the light of the divine presence, also every single Jew has, has a particular mission uh, to spread the light of Hashem. So why is that listed here at the beginning of Parsha Shemos? Teach us. Hashem is telling them, don't think that you're going to exile because of a punishment or because because um, um, I don't love you, quite the contrary. You're going to exile because I have such enormous love and respect for you, that you are, you are stars, a star of this enormous body of light, this enormous powerful being. You are stars and I need you to go down to the darkest place to bring light into, into the, in the exile. In fact, the word for exile is gullus. The Sazemus so explains that the word gullus means, this comes from the word reveal. The purpose of the exile is to reveal a divine light in the world. We are there to go to a dark place to, to spread that light. And the same thing also for us in our exile. The function of exile is not simply, is not simply a punishment. It's the contrary. It's there we are here to sp spread the divine light, to be ambassadors of holiness, to be people of extraordinary kindness, extraordinary sensitivity, extraordinary honesty, extraordinary holiness. And by us behaving that way in the world, we spread this enormous light of, of, of holiness and, and goodness, and people are, are impressed by that and people are inspired by that. That's our mission is to be stars, to be, be beacons of light, to, to help amplify the light of Hashem. That's why we're called Yisrael. Uh, what does Yisrael mean? So Yisrael can be broken up to Yashar, yashar Kel, which means straight to God. The, the idea is that, that, that our activities reflect Hashem Himself, that what we do reflects straight to God, that our behavior is a, is, a, is a reflection of Hashem. Therefore, our name Yisrael is really a reflection of Hashem's name. Of Hashem's name. Hashem's name refers to His awareness. Therefore, it's our mission to spread Hashem's name. Yehoshmi Rabbi Mevarach. May Hashem's name be increased. Our mission Yisrael is to increase Hashem's name. And and therefore, this is called Shemos, the par the parasha of the names. Teach us that our name, our name Yisrael, is there. To remind us that our, our purpose, our function, our calling is to enhance the name of Hashem, to enhance the, the awareness of Hashem in the world by being an ambassador, being a beacon of light. That's the meaning of Yisrael, that our actions reflect straight to God. Our name reflects God's name. <clears throat> That's one. Another explanation is as follows. The stars, the stars are, are even though there are billions of stars, that they're all distinct, but they're, compared, they're referred to as one corporate entity. In fact, the, the verse that Rashi quotes is, it says, Kulam b'shem yikr, they're all called by a name. It doesn't say names, it seems name singular. The idea is that all these billions of stars are called by one name. And the idea is that, that the stars have this power of unity. The stars have this koch of achdos. And the Jewish people are the same way. 
It says in, it says in the Haggadah by Purim that we are a people um, echad mefuzar mefura. Simply that means we are one people that are, that, are, that are scattered and separated. But there's also another way to read it. We are an am, we are a people who are able to make echad of mefuzar mefura. We are able to make one out of things that are separated and, and distinct. Which means that we, we also have the power to bring unity in a place where there's um, disunity. What does that mean? That Hashem gives us a special power to unify existence. You see, it would seem that, that, that there, there holy, there's a holy sphere and there's a mundane sphere. We have the power to, to, uh, to unify all existence, to make the all existence holy and spiritual and godlike. We could take an apple and use it to become fuel to Rechot Hashem and turn an apple to, to, into a spiritual thing. We can turn our occupation, our work, if we work with Betachon, with faith in Hashem, realize that we're simply doing what Hashem wants and, and Hashem will choose to bless us. We, we turn our actual, if we work with Betachon, we work with faith in Hashem and, 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 and honest in our work, we turn our actual work um, into, a, to a, into an act of mitzvah. So we can take, take all these things which seem to be disparate and separated and distinct from God and make, it, make everything godly. So we have this power of of being ma'achet, of uniting all existence. That's really the idea of reflecting God's unity. Hashem is one, we also could be one. We have the ability to unite all existence. So that's another comparison to the stars. That, that just as the stars have the special power of unity, so do we. We have the power to unite existence to this, and this harmonious existence, ultimately to bring all humanity uh, to this the recognition to, to, to recognition of the oneness of Hashem and the oneness, ultimately, the oneness of the universe. <clears throat> Number three, another fascinating idea is that now, of course, the stars are unified, but also it says that, that the stars have shame most. The stars have names, plural. So simply it means that each, name, each star has its own name, but also it means that every individual star has multiple names. Now, a name is a calling, right? What, what something is called, so what something with the name you give it, refers to its, its purpose. A refrigerator is called a refrigerator because its purpose is to refrigerate. So when something has multiple names, it means it has multiple callings, multiple missions. So... So these multiple missions reflect, reflect that, that it has different strengths and it has different functions. So similarly also the Jewish people, the Jewish people have shamos, have names. Each individual Jew, we have one basic name, but also we have multiple names. Which means that we have multiple strengths. My name, Avram Yitzchak, that's my main name. But the, the letters of Avram Yitzchak can be reorganized also to combine to a different name. And that refers to another strength. The point is that we have additional strengths, additional powers, additional um, proclivities and, and skills that we may not know we have. And therefore, part of the role of Golos, part of the role of the exile, the challenge of all Golos, Golos means to reveal, not only does it mean to reveal divine in the world, but also means to reveal our own new, new names. So the, the, the rolling around in the Golos, the word Golos also refer, refers to the word to roll, all the... the the, all the vicissitudes and ch changes of the Golas are there to, to re help us reveal our new strengths. And therefore, rather than being a punishment, it's actually a, an act of love. That's why, that's why Hashem tells us, you go into Golas, it's not a punishment, it's an act of love. I, I have this enormous respect for you. You will, you will spread light to the world. You will bring unity to the world. And you will be able to find new strengths that you never knew you had. And ultimately, use those strengths to uh, perfect yourself and help to perfect the world. Let's absorb these lessons and let's appreciate the joy it is to be Jewish. That we have such a, an, an incredible Torah, extraordinary Torah that helps give us such rich meaning and a relationship with Hashem and helps us to fill our lives and, and the lives of our community and ultimately the world with goodness and holiness and, and, and godliness and perfection. And, and we have this enormous mission and we are, we, we are, and we are ambassadors of this, this beautiful, beautiful Torah. An amazing shot.